And we're back with the ITT amplifier, or what remains of the ITT amplifier at this point. I'm almost done taking things out of here. What remains is the microcontroller board. Now, first look at all those additional components they had to put in to make it work. Anyway, the problem with taking out the microcontroller board is this orange wire. This orange wire, it's in the area of the microcontroller and it runs all the way over to the main amplifier. And that's a problem because what if the microcontroller sends out some sort of a signal via this orange wire to the main amplifier that tells the main amplifier to turn on or to unmute itself. You can't just simply cut this wire then because you'd end up with the main amplifier acting dead and you'd never know why. So I had to take a look into the service manual and it turns out it's actually the other way around. This orange wire connects straight into the base of this transistor and this transistor is set up as a switch. So it's the main amplifier that sends out some sort of a signal that causes this transistor to switch and that probably does something with the microcontroller. And that is very good news because that means I can just simply cut the orange wire and it's not going to uh, keep the main amplifier from working properly. The microprocessor board has finally been taken out, but as you can certainly see, there is a chunk of it missing. And that is because I used the Dremel tool to cut it out. This is the part of the board that contains the speaker selector switches, and I still need those. Disassembly of the amplifier is now complete, so I can start reassembling this. Now, I won't be able to use the original faceplate because, number one, obviously it wouldn't make any sense. Number two, out of the six mounting points, four are broken. And that's the way it came. I didn't do that. Now, if I put the top cover in place, we have a bit of a problem. See, this part of the side of the chassis is flush with the top cover, but the bottom panel and this side are sticking out about a centimeter. So before I can make a new faceplate, this has to come off. And thanks to the help of the jigsaw, the annoying overhang is now gone. And I've also moved the speaker selector switches in their mounting bracket from over here to over here to get them a little bit further away from the power switch. I have now finished making the new input circuit. We have two RCA jacks. These used to be the phono input jacks. In series with those we have two 680 nanofarad foil capacitors. These are coupling capacitors to keep out any DC. And this may be subject to further experiments. I know it's not ideal right now, but these are the best that I could find. This then goes into a long shielded cable. This used to be part of the amplifier. And then here is a proper volume control. This is a 250 kilo ohm potentiometer does have a center tab for a loudness circuit, but we don't need that. And then another shielded cable and the plug that originally plugged into the main amplifier is going to plug into the main amplifier again right there. The input circuit has been installed in the amplifier. Coincidentally, there was a hole in the chassis right there that had just the right size for the volume control, so that's now sitting right here. Does it work? Yes, it does.
I am now hopefully done making the new faceplate. This might require some further modifications. We'll see, I guess. This front of the chassis is recessed into the chassis by about 5 millimeters. So I made this 5 millimeter thick piece of hardboard. Now the initial plan was to copy this onto a piece of metal and then have the piece of metal sitting on top of the hardboard to cover it up and to make the amplifier look pretty. Now, the part of uh, making it look pretty is a bit of a problem because you get one scratch into the metal panel and the amplifier won't look pretty, it'll look ugly. So, I started copying this and it didn't go very well at all. So, after I ruined a piece of metal, I decided I'm just going to go with a plain hardboard. It'll have to do. Anyway, so uh, this uh, is not like I first uh, made this and then modified this chassis. You might be able to see it's looking a bit different now. Uh, no, uh, I actually went back and forth and I did a little bit of with this and then I did a little bit with this and vice versa. So these two pieces now finally fit together quite well. So how is this assembled? The first thing is this speaker selector switch assembly. This originally mounted directly onto this uh, chassis front. Not anymore. We now have some spacers that I had to grind to a custom length, which meant I also had to grind the screws to a custom length. So this, first of all, mounts into here. The speaker selector switch assembly is now in place and notice the screws are now countersunk into the material. And I've also removed some material on the back of this, here and here. So this can now sit nice and flat on this chassis. Now it screws in place in the corners. Everything has been screwed together. The volume control is still in the same spot. And this big cutout around the speaker selector switches make sense when I now install the switch caps. There we go. All the other holes are still work in progress, so let me continue. I just thought before putting this all together I should probably take some time to inspect the underside of the main amplifier circuit board and what a good idea that was. See, this capacitor down here was secured in place using this nasty circuit glue. And somehow the glue has made its way along here. And coincidentally, it's now right across the transformer output. Now, the transformer didn't care. It just simply went and burned the glue as it got conductive. So this is, uh, it doesn't really come across on camera, but this is absolutely burned. So I got to clean that out. Also, there is a lot of flux around the output transistor connections. So some more cleaning is going to be required there. And finally, the faceplate is done and it's now black and pretty. And that's because I did manage to dig up the motivation to actually make this uh, metal panel to go in front of the hardboard, which is still there as a spacer. So how does this work? Well, the power switch is over here. That has been replaced because the original power switch, although it had a spark suppression capacitor, liked to arc. Here is a power LED that's hooked up to the 19 volt regulator on the amplifier board via a 1 kilo ohm resistor. 
There are the speakers A, speakers B, selector switches. Interesting thing is this amplifier, when you're activating both pairs of speakers, it puts them in series. There is a headphone jack that's also new because the original one was a really cheap plasticky thing. There is a volume control, we've already seen that. And then right there we have a mono switch. Now the mono switch is going to be useful for the planned application of this amplifier. I'm going to connect this to a computer and when you're, for example, watching YouTube videos, you come across these transfers from analog video from time to time that have audio only on one of the two channels. And that's really annoying, especially when you're listening over headphones. And the mono switch fixes that. The amplifier has been put back together and you can't believe how glad I am. This project took a lot longer than expected. In fact, I've been at this for about a week now. Yeah, unfortunately these videos never show how much work certain things are. Anyway, thank you for watching.